Hello, welcome to Van Diemen's Land Model Bench, and I'm Dan. And today we're going to be doing an inbox review. Now, the subject we're going to be doing is a Mustang, and originally I hadn't actually set out to review this particular kit. I'd actually done some research online and was going to uh, try and get the Revel 172 scale Mustang in the RAF colours. But when I went to my local uh, model shop, unfortunately, they didn't have it in stock. And really none of the other 172 Mustangs sort of caught my eye. But then I did notice that they had the Revel 148 scale uh, P51C, or as it's known in RAF service, the uh, Mark III. And it kind of appealed to me. I really think the Mustangs lines work really well and look really attractive uh, with the RAF markings on them. So this is the kit I took home. I had no idea whether the kit was good, bad or indifferent. I just uh, took a guess that most kits from Revel are either okay to very good. So I thought we'll give it a shot. So here we are. Um, as you can see, it's 148 scale. The um, part number is uh, 04872. And it comes in the fairly standard now sort of Revel packaging with the bright blue cover that you can't miss when you're looking in the hobby shop. I paid about $37 Australian for this. I probably could have got it for a little bit cheaper to be honest, but I like to uh, buy the odd kit and uh, bits and pieces from my local hobby store to help support them. On the side of the packaging here we've got some photographs of the completed model which looks quite nice and some notes about it saying it's got uh, structured surfaces with recessed panel joints, a detailed cockpit with instrument panel, detailed sidewalls and seat, a detailed undercarriage, tyres with distinctive profiles optionally worn, a rotating propeller, a pilot figure is included, there are two auxiliary fuel tanks two bombs and a decal set for two RAF versions. So not too bad at all, you get a fairly decent range of options there and also some nice detail. Uh, we also do have what looks to be a colour call out as well where it's just basically listed yellow, medium grey, dark green, dust grey and green. So you probably want to go to some other sources to get the correct RAF colours for this particular model. Uh, the skill level is listed as four. I don't know what the rebel skill levels mean but I'm hoping that means I can build it. I guess we'll find out. Um, some of the box art obviously has got you know uh, description of the Mustang in different languages. This one's got a short paragraph there on uh, the Mark III including the fact that um, some of them were fitted with the Malcolm hood which I'm hoping will be a option included in the kit. We'll find out in a moment. And on the back We've just got some, basically some promotional materials there for other Revel kits. Oh, and we do have an explanation about the skill level. So that we said this was skill level 4. So this is kits with up to 150, 150 parts for more experienced modelers. So I should be okay. I say should because anything can happen when it comes to me building models, but we'll see. Uh, one feature that is a Revel trait and I really don't like it is this has got the side opening box I, it's really annoying um, sometimes when you're working on parts you like to put them back in the box to leave them there for safekeeping and this doesn't work very well at all when you've got the, the box lid type where you can just lift the lid up and put the parts in it's much better but anyway that's what Revel's done so I'm sure we'll cope with it let's put, that, put the box aside for a moment okay so We've got a few instructions here. Let's put the kit aside for a moment and just have a look and see what we've got for the instructions. So it looks going to, looks like it's going to be a fairly typical um, Revel instruction manual. The uh, copyright date on the actual manual is 2013. A little bit of information there about the P51. On the inside there we've got a little bit of a uh, disclaimer about some of the precautions you should take uh, when working with solvents and knives and all sorts of sharp things and then we've got a page here that has a color call out for us and then we also have on this page a list or a view of all the sprues which is nice it's always good when they're included and then the actual assembly starts here now this is going to be a fairly atypical kit assembly i'd imagine given it's a uh, you know, your typical sort of uh, single seater prop fighter. So as you can see we start off with the interior of the fuselage basically building up the cockpit area. Here we go, so we're adding some detail around there, putting the cockpit together 
Um, nothing particularly surprising there, just reminding us to do a little bit of filing cleanup, but that looks quite reasonable. On the next page, on step four, we continue on with the cockpit. So now we're building the actual seat for the pilot. We're putting the seat in place. If we want our pilot, they've got a nice uh, blowout picture here with all the color callouts on it. Then we go ahead and complete the underneath of the air intake for the uh, Mustang. Basically putting all the bits and pieces in that we need for the inside of the fuselage. And then for the reasons I'm not quite sure, we jump across to the undercarriage and we start assembling the wheels and uh, the undercarriage doors. And then we're back in step 10, back into the fuselage where we're actually going to go ahead and put the two halves together. Now, there's no indication at all that you really need to have step 9 done, the wheels, in order to do step 10. So if you wanted to, I guess you could go straight from 8 to 10 and do 9 at some time that's more convenient. I do make a note that you'll need to glue the two halves together and they're suggesting you either use pegs or uh, sticky tape and give it um, some time to dry thoroughly, which makes sense. Then over the page, we've got um, some more assemblies. Time on the outside of the fuselage. We're putting the cover on, engine cover on, uh, the exhaust stacks. We're then going to put the uh, rudder in. Sorry, beg your pardon, the elevators in. Then we've got uh, the propeller itself which comes as four parts, which is uh, nice, so you can uh, paint them all separately and then glue them together if you like. And again, just a note there about giving them plenty of time to dry. And then we're on to the wings, the bottom piece of the wing being a single piece, and then we've got the two top halves of the, uh, the wing, which come together. And then once they've dried, we then go ahead and attach the wings to the fuselage. Uh, then, mysteriously, <laughs> the other uh, wheel and uh, undercarriage door suddenly appear. Basically a mirror in, of uh, step 9, which is now step 17. And then on to 18 where we're putting on various bits and pieces uh, underneath there, including the landing light cover and uh, a few other bits and pieces there. And we're putting on some ailerons there too from look of things. Then we're putting all the undercarriage together and at this point you've got a couple of options. You can either decide that you'd like to go with some bombs or you could decide you want to go with some drop tanks and you've got the option there which is nice. Uh, finally we're putting the propeller on. It's good that they left that towards the end, particularly for uh, this kit was bought by someone who's an early or beginner modeler because propellers have a tendency to break if you have to fit them up any earlier than that. And our last step is going to be to fit the canopy. And I'm guessing we do have an optional canopy. Looks like we've got the Malcolm Hood on that one, which is the blown um, canopy. We're interested to see if we've got the standard one as well. Finally, we have a page that gives us a bit of a idea of the various colors that we're going to use. And it looks like the invasion stripes, which are these black and white stripes on the wings, are not included as decals. So you'll have to paint those on, which I would have done anyway. But I guess if you're a a younger modeler or new to modeling that might be a little bit of a disappointment because you'd have to uh, mask them off and you may not be too confident about that. Um, similarly you're going to have to mask off the front as well for the nose when you're going to put the white on it but it's quite a quite a striking color scheme so I think the model should look absolutely fantastic once it's finished in those colors. Um, so it looks good it would have been nice if it was a color but uh, I guess we've got the box art so that helps us along a little bit as well. And, oh yeah, here we go. So we've also got the alternative markings and we can see this one's is a little bit plainer. So we don't have the invasion stripes, which would be perhaps better if you're starting out. And we also don't have the Malcolm Hood on this version either. So that's nice. So you've got the two choices there. Um, should have mentioned too, the actual markings. This one here is for a um, Mustang of number 213 squadron in Italy in July 1944. And the one with the invasion stripes is number 315 squadron um, based in England in June 1944. So that all looks very good and a fairly straightforward assembly uh, for this type of subject. Now we've got another safety sheet here for the look of things. So we'll have a bit of a look at that. Uh, it's been written in about every language in the world, I think. But where's the English one? 
Oh, here we go. Okay, so it's a little bit more safety advice about um, how to handle the model and not recommended for children under three and so on, which is fair enough. So I think at my age, I don't need to worry about that. And here we have the Deagles. <coughs> They're printed in Italy, which is interesting, uh, but there is no actual specific mention of who printed them. Uh, they do look to be in register, which is nice. Um, colours look quite reasonable. I do like... I'm not every model will want this, but I do like the fact that the seat belts are actually included as decals. So if you don't feel confident about making up your own seat belts, or you think in this scale, uh, it might be a little bit overkill. It's nice that they've included that as a feature, so you can uh, put those on the seats, and they probably look fine underneath the hood and everything else as well. Um, everything there looks quite good. Um, even the smaller uh, markings all seem to be quite good. They're all in register. Uh, fairly matte so yeah that's looking fairly encouraging actually so of course we'll find out at the end when we build the kit what I'm going to do with this kit by the way is once I finish building it as part of that video build I'm also going to do a, a separate video where I'll just talk about some of the, the pluses and minuses of the kit and what I experienced while I was putting it together so if you're watching this review thinking you might want to buy this kit uh, that other video once I've got it up on my YouTube channel might be worth a bit of a squeeze as well Okay, now we come to the main kit, and this is where things get a little bit interesting, because as I said to you before, I had no idea uh, at all about this kit or its, or its uh, heritage, or you know, whether it was a monogram kit that had been reboxed or it was in a Rebel kit or whatever. And looking at the packaging straight away, both here and actually on the sprue here, I see ICM, which is in fact another manufacturer. This is a Russian uh, kit manufacturer makes some quite nice models actually um, and it looks like uh, Rebel have just basically completely reboxed it. it looks like this probably came straight from ICM and then they've just whacked it in the Rebel box but anyway that's fair enough uh, we'll give it a bit of a go I have done a little bit of research on ICM um, so we'll talk a bit about that as we go through so as you can see there's one main um, bag so we'll open that up See what we've got inside. Okay, so all the uh, all the sprues are together except for the clear parts, which are in a separate bag, which is nice. Here we've got the main fuselage. Um, I have to say it's not too bad. This has actually got uh, recessed panel lines and. Actually, while we're talking about reviewing this, I should probably mention I'm not a rivet counter, so I'm not going to tell you if uh, some particular detail that's marked on this is right or wrong. Um, sometimes I'll do some research and notice something isn't right and I'll go and fix it on the kit. But generally speaking, what I'm looking for when I'm doing a review like this is I'm just looking for the overall quality of the moulding, uh, the level of detail. Whether there's any jumps out that's going to be particularly difficult or time-consuming to correct, uh, warpage, that kind of thing. So at the moment, none of that's uh, hitting me. Uh, one thing I can say is the recess panel, lining, panel lines are quite uh, fine. I suspect they're probably more in scale than, say, for example, Airfix, but uh, that is going to mean that you're going to have to put some very thin coats of paint on the model, or you're going to take a very real risk of uh, covering up some of that detail. The actual recess panel lines yeah, they're not too bad. They go a little bit soft as you go towards the edges of the mould in some of them. Not, not really in a too bad a way. A little bit of scribing, I think that'll be fine. There is a slight amount of flash around uh, some of the openings there in the cockpit. Again, you'll just need to do a little bit of a light uh, filing and sanding, and that should all come up quite well. The rudder is actually part of the main fuse line, so you won't be able to pose the rudder um, separately. Um, <coughs> separately unless you're prepared to um, cut that out and fix it in place where you want it but overall not too bad inside mm, oh dear i really don't like it when models uh, manufacturers do this but we have got in some fairly prominent ejection pin marks now where they're down like in here and here it's not too bad you can get into them fairly easily 
but you can see that they've replicated some of the ribbing of the side of the aircraft there and guess what there's a stonking big ejection pin mark right in the middle of one of them right in the least convenient spot to get to so that's a little bit annoying and it's on both sides as well so it's a little bit of a shame but anyway that happens um I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it, but it would be nice if manufacturers didn't do that, I think. Um, also over here, this is going to need cleaning up as well, because I think if you didn't, it actually would uh, foul with this side, and you wouldn't be able to get a good, um, a good finish when you tried to join the two pieces together. So that would be a trap if you're a younger modeler and you weren't aware of that, and you just went ahead and glued it and tried to uh, get it all stick together. But overall, yeah, that's okay. I'm not uh, feeling disappointed about the kit from that early indication. Let's go and have a look at the wings now. And again, uh, some very nice fine panel detail. And we do have a little bit of uh, riveting as well, which is all recessed on this particular kit. It's actually quite nice. Uh, you can even got little navigation lights on it, which look to be nicely made and in scale. It's actually pretty good. Now, when I was researching this uh, kit online, I did find that um, Apparently it owes, well, let's just say a striking resemblance to, to the Tamiya P51 kit. Some people uh, would make claims perhaps that uh, ICM were inspired, shall we say, by some of the um, parts out of the Tamiya kit. And uh, indeed, apparently you can take that uh, fuselage and you can actually join one half of the ICM fuselage to the other half being a Tamiya Mustang. So that's kind of interesting. But... Uh, that aside, whatever reason being, it does seem to have a reasonable amount of detail. We have got some nice detail there and what's going to be the uh, undercarriage, undercarriage bays. What I am noticing, <coughs> pardon me, what I am noticing though is all of these details are very fine. So you're going to have to put on a very fine primer and paint. I'd suggest you uh, mist it on rather than just try and coat it on because if you put an ink too heavy on a lot of the detail I'm looking at here is just going to disappear. There's no question about that. On this particular sprue we can also see we've got a copyright date for ICM of 2001. So again a little bit of cleanup required on the wings but I think there's enough detail in there to look quite nice once it's assembled. Okay, on this brew we've got uh, our propellers, and we've got all four of them there. Actually, we've got eight propellers, so it looks like we've got two different types of propeller styles, which is interesting, because I was going to say, they don't look right, and I think they would be the ones for the kit. They're also, uh, this is nice, I like this. We have separate hubs for both uh, the front and back of each wheel, which makes painting a lot nicer, because we can paint the tyre, and get that all looking perfect and then we can just glue in the hub when we're done so that's a very nice feature uh, the actual spinner looks quite nice it looks to be fairly fairly correct as far as I'm concerned uh, with the Mustang <coughs> we have the two drop tanks with the uh, join split in the middle there which is probably the best place for it to be so that's nice to see as well Another nice addition is that the wheels, are, they have two sets of wheels. You can have the wheels uh, fully inflated, as you can see there, um, like they would look in flight, and also if they had some weight on them, like the aircraft was parked. So again, that's a nice feature. The exhaust stacks are quite fine, but they don't have hollowed out exhaust um, stacks on the model. I can, I, can get, I can live with that, because the 148 scale, that would be very hard to do, so that sounds pretty reasonable to me. And interestingly enough, we have two variants again. So we have the ones with the exhaust stacks with the shrouds around them and the ones without, which is a really nice addition because um, I know, for example, a lot of the uh, Mustangs that were serving with the Australian Air Force in Italy didn't have the shroud. They, they were actually like this. They were just sort of bare. Whereas um, some of the RAF ones, of course, did have the shroud around them. So it's really nice that they've given you those options, particularly if you're looking at using aftermarket decals to represent a different Mustang but again quite nice looking on the other side there we can see there's also been an attempt to put a little bit of detail into the inside of the undercarriage doors but yeah, yet again 
we have ejection pin markings just at the most inconvenient spot uh, not as bad as the fuselage, they're not as uh, heavy but still so a little bit of cleanup is going to be required on this kit um, is what I'm seeing and the details are very fine so we have to be a bit careful about our sanding and our painting let's go on to the next one and this one oops, we've got two joined here so let's move that one out of the way for a moment and this one's uh, got the interior detail so we can see inside our cockpit here and I've got to say that looks quite nice don't know how much of that you're actually going to see once the uh, model's put together but it's nice that they've made the effort to include it so it looks very nice actually um, I like this as well the back of the seat there looks very good that's actually pretty impressive these are also very impressive these are the, uh, another part of the <coughs> pardon me another part of the undercarriage there where the, uh, the uh, what we call them the gear, door, the gear base, uh, that is actually quite nicely detailed as well here's the other part of the gear doors again this is the interior detail, looks quite nice and then we've got our uh, elevators in the back here I've got to say this is all looking quite good I, um, I'm pleasantly surprised, I, I thought there may be a little bit crude in places but it's not, it's actually really nice uh, interesting that I was saying before the details are very fine, but these sprues, I mean look at them they're incredibly thin, uh, I haven't seen anything like that before but anyway, they're doing the job, the plastic itself feels fine by the way uh, I can't see any problem with the actual plastic itself so that looks pretty good and now onto the lucky last sprue and this is the actual uh, smaller parts here, so we've got some details for the side of the cockpit walls uh, we have our two, uh, I don't know what you call those, I guess they're brackets to hold on the bombs um, the actual gear uh, undercarriage gear there and the back wheel and it looks like the seat, yes and the seat has got some very nice detail in it as well you know this is actually quite a nicely detailed kit for 148 scale and I know it's not the most expensive kit I did find out later that if I'd bought this as an ICM kit for example I could have still got it with the RAF markings and got it a little bit cheaper as well or alternatively with some uh, figures included I don't know what the decals are like with the um, ICM version though so I don't know if they're the same ones or whether the uh, Rebels made their own but overall I'm not disappointed I think there's more than enough detail in this particular kit for 148 scale so it's looking very promising if you are looking for an RAF Mustang you might want to check out the Revel 148 scale P51C or as the RAF knew it the Mark III thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next kit review Just got in the car to go down the hardware store and uh, wouldn't you credit it, fuel low and uh, it's not payday, payday's tomorrow so I haven't got enough cash to actually put in the car so it looks like we're doing this run on the uh, on fumes and hoping the um, the V8 can be driven economically I suppose you can do that with a V8, I haven't really tried before oh well, we'll give it a go